Now we've heard politicians toss around different initiatives to lower the cost of health care. Now there's another plan to address the problem, one that's trying to unite the different sides in this debate. Those sides include the presidents of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce and the AFL-CIO. They spoke to Scott Finn. Well, we're talking about health care. Um, I wonder if you could talk about what this plan will do and what you're trying to do with this new initiative. Well, uh, here's the thing that I think we can talk about for a little bit. Kenny and I and a number of other people have been working together for really a couple of years to try to understand better some of the challenges related to uh, health care costs, health care coverage, how we get more people covered, uh, how we get people covered at affordable cost. Um, and um, the legislature has, through its uh, uh, joint health care committees, has uh, created a working group uh, they have hired one of the leading national experts, a man named Dr. Ken Thorpe, and, and his approach largely is going to see is going to be to take a look at what are the things that we can do that are relatively non-controversial, but that might make a real difference. It's a little bit like saying let's pick the low-hanging fruit first, and, and the belief is that there is still some low-hanging fruit out there. So the hope here is that Mr. Thorpe, who I understand we're spending about $100,000 to basically get his services, is going to be able to, to give us new ideas and bring these people together. Um, we tried, sometimes tried a controversial approach or confrontational approach. You think of the pharma bill where a few years ago, um, we, basically the legislature had this bill that the pharmaceutical industry just did not agree with. And we've had, I think it would be fair to say, limited success with that. So do you think that there's enough common ground now that, that labor and business can, can come to some agreement to what to do with, with health care? Well, let me give you two quick examples. That's Steve Roberts and Kenny Purdue sitting here at this time and talking about traditionally for years we have been at odds with each other on everything. But a lot of conversations happen. We've been able to talk to each other and figure out there are things that we can agree on, but there's always going to be things that we disagree on, and those are going to happen. We, we expect that to happen. Health care is one of those issues that we can agree on needs to be addressed. To the pharma issue, pharma is in this issue with us. We, we fought with pharma, uh, and I'll say that it was a, it was a tough battle. And we, were, we didn't, I don't know that we won anything. Uh, we, we stabbed at it, and we poked at it, and we prodded. I don't know that we won anything at all, but now pharma has come to the table and are sitting there with us to talk about this very issue about health care. It is important to them, it is to us, it's important about the working people that that, that are in this state is the, is the business people that are trying to stay here. And it's such a critical issue that I don't know that we have a choice anymore. Um, I'm going to lay down the sabers on this one and figure out how we can fix it. If it's low-hanging fruit, let's go at it. And as Ken Thorpe comes back with his report, let's see what he says. And we, the legislature, let the legislature know that we're there to support him. Well, let me give you a list. This is not the first time we've gone down this road mm -hmm. of some of the initiatives that we've had in the last few years. Vision Shared had a committee on health care. Tom Haywood was very in instrumental in that. Governor Wise had a small business health care plan to allow them to buy into uh, 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 health insurance. A high risk insurance pool. Governor Manchin's uh, medical home proposal mm -hmm. where people for $100 a month could get preventive care and primary health care clinics. We have Mountain Health Choices with Medicaid trying to encourage people to do preventive health care and Medicaid. So we have all these different efforts and they've, I think they've helped individuals, but we're still talking about a system that seems to be out of control. Can West Virginia actually fix this problem of the uninsured and rising health care problems? The, this is an enormous challenge for us as a state, and one of the reasons is that we have one of the oldest and least healthy populations. So we're going to have uh, a lot of pressure on our health care providers, a lot of use, and a lot of cost associated with that use because we have a population that uh, traditionally falls into the hardest to serve, the most expensive to take care of, uh, least healthy, and so forth. All of these initiatives are good and have helped in some way. I think what, uh, where we really see um, the opportunity in front of us now is that um, the more people begin to think about all of this and begin to talk about all of this, the more partnerships begin to develop, just like the partnership between the AFL-CIO and the Chamber of Commerce. It's not an official partnership. We're just we're able to sit down and talk to each other about, you know, we really want the same things. We want our state to have progress. We want to see our people advance. We want to see people earn more money and live better. Uh, if, if we have minor disagreements, they're probably about, well, how do we cause those things to happen? And what, what we see is uh, through the um, 
taking on of this uh, whole healthcare picture, we may come up with some things that are state specific that we can do in West Virginia. And that's what I think Ken Thorpe is going to help us try to focus on. He helped uh, do a similar project in Vermont, which is another small state with a few more resources maybe. Um, would this possibly lead to things like uh, having a mandate where everyone has to get health insurance in the state? Is that one thing that's being talked about? Uh, and what are some of the ideas for reducing health care costs, which is the other thing that this is trying to deal with? You know, it, uh, the one thing about this plan, there is no preconceived notion of what we're going to do. The one thing I think we can agree on is the fact that we're going to take the price of it, set it aside, That'll be maybe the last very talking point that we're going to talk about. Who's going to pay for it and how we're going to address that issue? But there's so many things in this that we can talk about. You, you talked about before about how this is a little different. Uh, there's two things. One is that the groups are working together with this and we're serious about it. The other thing is that you have two chairmen that have come together, Don Perdue in the House and, and Roman Prezioso in the Senate, come together know this issue is so important not only to, to the, their families, their towns, their people they represent, but the state. You come in at the cost of what happened with PEIA, with Medicaid, Medicaid. I mean, it just strikes in every, every day that they go in that legislature. They are working together. They've got the committees that are started on, on the interims. You know, when you put these committees together, when, when they, the, the target is there, and it's how do we fix this system, they can come to a conclusion. There's going to be some disagreement. They can come to a conclusion of where they need to go. And that's a little and different. I think that can happen. But that's a little different from the pharma bill where there was disagreement between the two chairs about which way to go. So uh, give me an estimate here. And this is TV, so it'll be you know, preserved forever. When do you think that this effort will lead to actual legislation that might affect people's lives? Well, I think there could be some legislation coming up in the 2009 session. And um, let me pick up on something that uh, Kenny was talking about a little bit, which is some of the things that have been identified would be, in addition to helping us all get health, you know, if we, if we get healthier, the cost automatically goes down. If we develop a way to, to have good electronic medical records, um, we're probably, in many cases, in our, just in our healthcare system, we're probably um, still keeping records, and I'm perhaps metaphorically speaking, but we're still keeping records with a with a quill pen and a and, and a parchment paper. I mean, we're certainly in many cases doing it with pencil and paper. Um, that that adds a lot of expense. Um, we have uh, so we see lots of opportunities to bring down cost and improve quality there. We also uh, believe in helping everybody find a medical home, uh, so that everybody is working on good health before he or she gets sick. Uh, those are things that will help bring down costs. So, uh, the discussion that's been held here today about the need to bring down cost is very important. And then add we add to that how do we how do we simply find ways to get more people insured so that they're taking better care of themselves. Well, Steve and Kenny, thanks for coming on today. I appreciate you all being here, and we'll continue this, the discussion in the months ahead, I'm sure. Thank you very much.